favorite story, my favorite, absolute favorite military story. And I'm sorry, I have to give <laughs> you, you got this. You got him, man. Right? Um, it is about, I would say, 2 in the morning. Um, and Northern Lights are out. Like, it is it is pitch black. Uh, you know, blackout conditions because we're it's field training exercise. So it's February. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, in it's cold, in it is eighty two <laughs> miserably cold, eighty two degrees below zero, Ugh. eighty two degrees below zero. That's I, ugly. I am outside, fixing a coolant leak, on a vehicle barehanded, <laughs> right? Because you can't get to the parts or hold your tools with these heavy mitts on. So, um, you know. By the way, soldiers out there. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. I need to say Don't this do is this not approved. Yeah. Don't use my story <laughs> as a rule. Okay. <laughs> I broke the rules, but I had problems to solve because I needed to get this thing back on the road. Um, uh, so I'm doing the work, uh, you know, grabbing my uh, quarter inch socket with 10 millimeter, uh, you know, a quarter inch uh, socket wrench with 10 millimeter socket. I remember that specifically because we were working on the Sus V at the time. Um, I forget the nomenclature, but I believe it was a uh, N10. Oh goodness, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna belabor that. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, but that Sus V, um, uh, the power pack was uh, European, mm. right? And so you had many mixed parts of sizes to deal with, right? American construction of the body. Uh, the power pack is European, so the entire powertrain was um, all in metric. I remember this uh, because uh, that 10 millimeter socket fell <laughs> into the engine well, and I only had one in my toolbox. Of course. Right? Yeah. So you're hunting that thing, and you're cursing up a storm. <laughs> right. Um, and again, barehanded, 82 degrees below oh. zero. And so after a while, I just realized the only source of heat was the leaking coolant. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm bathing my hands. I'm washing my hands in the coolant just to thaw them enough to continue reaching down and to find that socket to put back on my ranch to tighten things up. And then I hear, hey, soldier, in the only voice that could pronounce that, that, that would even have that, that tone. Hey, soldier. Oh. I was like, oh, no. That's Sergeant Major Bradley. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, oh, he's going to light me up for not having my gloves on. Oh, no. I'm going to be doing push ups. I mm-hmm. know this. I'm going to push the earth out of orbit this time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Just turn around, you lock up, and go, oh, what's going on here? I said, oh, sorry, Major, I'm just trying to get this vehicle back on. He goes, but your gloves are down by your side. <laughs> I said, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, Major. <laughs> they are by my side. I need to get to the tight spot to grab my tools. It fell down into the well. He goes, oh, seemed to be in there for a while. I said, well, I'm trying to keep my hands warm, too. <laughs> sorry, Major. On, the, on hand freeze, it's leaking still. Can I get back to it, sorry, Major? No. <laughs> Well, let me bum a smoke, and then I'll let you get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yes, yeah, our Major, oh, absolutely. Wait, wait. Reach in, give him one, and he's on his way, and I'm back to it, you know? Wow. Um, but, you know, you get that out, um, and then a call comes in that there's a vehicle down, um, and it needed to be recovered because they needed to finish deploying some combo lines. It's like, combo lines at 3 in the morning? <laughs> Who's dropping combo lines at 3 in the morning? Oh, the United States military drops combo line at 3 in the morning. <laughs> this should not be a surprise to you. Yeah. This is a 24-7 operation. Yeah. Okay? All right. Yes, absolutely. Still no sleep. <laughs> right? Not sleeping. Yep. Um, so you go. Um, we drive out. Me and my, again, one of my best friends. He's a, he's a TC. Uh, we're driving out to the map. We learned that it is another, you know, one of these uh, sus V vehicles, which is a, a crab, you know, think of it like those snow trackers that you usually see in Antarctica. Totally. But militarized. Yep. So it's one of those. Um, and uh, we hear that it's our friend that is overturned in the vehicle. Oof. That's and dangerous. the vehicle is shut down. Mind you, again, 82 degrees below zero. Right. It's overturned. You cannot run the engine. Yep. And they are at the top of... Donley don't. Oh, geez. Yeah, they're not in a good spot. They're not in a good spot. Yeah. And the wind has kicked up, and they can't start a fire. Right. So you have to figure out how to get there as quickly as possible. 
It's a blizzard. It, I'd say a blizzard, but definitely a huge snowstorm. It's Wind's not sunny. Whipping. It's not <laughs> sunny. Like this thing, it is like this is horrible conditions, yeah. right? So we're driving, and after a while, you know, TC Wagner is like, "Hey, pull off here, hit this fire trail." So we hit up the fire trail. He's he's studying the maps, and I'm driving, you know, with blackout lights and NVGs, right? Because now we're off the road, and you got to go dark now. Yeah. So we're driving, and you know, meanwhile, like this is this is my friend up there. So I'm whipping this thing, right? Like, I'm the mechanic. I know it's necessary, and we're going to practice like we play. So I'm drifting <laughs> this vehicle uphill to go get him, Yeah. right? So you, <laughs> we get there. And this, and the only reason that we knew exactly where to go was because, and this is where it gets a little bit fun, is I thought that he was going to be stuck at the top of the hill because that's what the grid coordinates that were given in. And we plotted on the map. Well, at the top of the hill, I saw these lights. And I went, ooh, maybe that's a radio tower. Obviously, Kama would be there. Let's head that direction. So we get up to there. And it's not a like a radio light beacon. No, it's the Sus V on its side. And its headlights are turned in a way that they are pointing straight up in the sky. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so he's stuck in that vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> right being with this thing beacon. on its side being his own beacon and they're in the back with a small campfire <laughs> using the magazines that they had brought with yep. them in their packs right <laughs> and i'm like so <laughs> we pull up and i'm like wait a minute first of all this thing's on its side man what's going on it's like we were you know running cable and went over you know some muskag yeah and it rolled. And I went, okay, no problem. We got all the tow cable equipment. Like, we'll, we'll latch yeah. something together. We'll figure that out. But I said, why are you trying to start a fire in here? He goes, because we were freezing. Right. And we had to make a choice whether or not to freeze because we have no radio communications. Because we are out of communications right now. Because we have to deploy the communications. <laughs> <laughs> or... We could start a fire and we'll keep it small and keep it regulated. And we have all of the fire extinguishers here, but we have to get out of the wind because there is nothing up here. There is no shelter. You can't dig in. Everything's frozen solid. Like, what do you do? Wind's blowing you 50 miles make, an hour. You got to make choices. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so he's doing that again today. We laugh about this right. every single time. But at that moment, like it was, oh, this scary. is serious, yeah. right? This is scary. I'm still, you know, a young man, not really a, knowing the ways of the world. And these guys are about to freeze to death. And, oh, this is panic time. And 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 so we flip the vehicle. We get the radio working again because they can start the vehicle, charge the batteries, get the combo back up, right? Mm -hmm. Do all those things. Um, and then we get word, hey, tow the vehicle back. Combo has to continue the mission. Oh. Said, wait a minute, but they have no vehicle. How are they going to continue the mission? Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, listen here, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> stand by. Okay. Well, uh, stand by. Hey, come on the vehicle. Let's right. warm up. Right. Mine's running. <laughs> right? We get back. Uh, they get back to us. Stay at your position. Comma platoon, or no, scout platoon will be there in 15 mics. Whoa. Scout platoon will be here? Yeah. Wait a minute. They're coming. We're not going to them. They're coming. They're coming uphill. We're at the top. Yeah. They're coming uphill to get them. I have a lot of respect for military logistics right now. They're right. <laughs> you know what this I mean? These guys make some real stuff You just happen. have some things moving. Yeah. You have some things happening, right? Needless to say... He was fine. Everyone was fine. It's a training mission, but it showed the flexibility of logistics and systems. It showed the flexibility of people and it showed how when you have a mission and people are determined to accomplish it, anything's possible, right? You collaborate, you get with people, you solve problems, and then you move on to the next challenge. Like that was all in a 24-hour period. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Life lessons. That's man. a life lesson life right lessons. there. So, <laughs> so it's a fun story. Yeah. I like to share it. Um, but it kind of helped 
um, codify how I see the world sometimes, right? Absolutely. Like you have unexpected challenges when you are battle weary and you're tired. And, but that's when sometimes the greatest moments in your life happen. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's episode. We hope you really enjoyed it. If you love the people and stories of the Puget Sound, please support this podcast by reviewing us and rating us on Apple Podcasts. Stay tuned next week as we continue to curate the underground.